Hey there. Today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a shader that randomizes textures across multiple objects. This is a good technique to use when you've duplicated an object and you want each object to have a similar but different texture. The goal is to have detailed textures across all the objects without any repeating patterns, as well as some color variations. I'm going to show you the shader that I used on my Panther, Panther tracks here. Uh, track uh, tank tracks are a good example of an item that's duplicated multiple times, um, but requires different shading uh, variations without any repeating patterns in it. Now, this is an example of what we're trying to avoid. This is just a simple rust texture applied directly to uh, one of the what, all the tracks and you can see right away that there's a repeating pattern. We've got these black dots repeating along here. We've got the same pitting going down the middle, same black dots here. And it may not be super obvious on something that's as noisy as the tank track. Uh, on a cleaner object the repeating pattern would be much more obvious. But even here, uh, if you've got enough of these things going on, the eye is going to pick up on that pattern, and it's something we want to try to avoid. And this is what our final project is going to look like. So the repeating patterns have been uh, eliminated. We've got some wear marks, some dirt marks. Um, but the most important thing is that, is that we don't have that telltale sign of a repeating texture across them. Here's our project file. I have these tank tracks that I use on my Panther, and I've uploaded these to BlendSwap. So you can go there, download them if you want. Uh, you can use the, the tracks for anything you want, and if you want to do a deeper dive into the texture, you know the same texture that we're doing here will be there as well. I have Alt D to duplicate these, so they're instances of each other, just to save memory, and they are UV unwrapped, so that every single tank track has the same UV layout. So the UV layout for each track fills the entire UV uh, space there. So let's look at the shader now. I'm just going to take a couple of these here. All right, so the shader is pretty large, but it's a lot of repeating information. So once we learn one, we'll have a pretty good idea what's going on. The, the texture, I have two rust textures. One of the rust textures looks like this. It's just a picture of rust. It's not... Um, a you know a PBR texture it doesn't have a built-in bump or normal map or anything like that. It's, I'm not even sure that it's stylable. Um, so that's what this is here. So we just have a simple rust texture coming off the UV coordinates. And for just demonstration purposes, I'm going to show this UV map, which is what this guy looks like. We'll look at what that shows up here in a second. Uh, so the texture runs through some nodes. This one, these, this node here, uh, is just going to correct some of the color. This is going to be a um, going to generate the roughness map, and then this color ramp is going to generate our bump. We'll take a look at those in a second. But for right now, if we take a look at this map, you can see the UVs are very repetitive here. Right, so this is what we're starting with, all this repetition. This is what we're going to eventually avoid. Um, but the first thing we're going to do, instead of uh, adjusting that, uh, adjusting the pattern, we're going to add some color variation. And that's what I do here. So this hue and saturation simply changes the, adjust the color to be a little less saturated. And then that feeds into a color or a color ramp that uses the same, same color. So we have this color basically effectively splitting between here and here. And we're going to use this noise node, this noise texture to create this black and white pattern. So it's going to tell Blender to s just put some of the color from this one and some of the color from this one. And that'll just break up the, the color tones. And we want, all the other thing we want to do here is we want to randomize this per object. And we can do that by using the object info mode, info node. That's going to output a number between 0 and 1. And if we multiply that by 360, it's going to effectively rotate the texture uh, some random number of degrees. So if this came out as 0.5, the, the output from this would be 180. If this came out as 0.25, the output from this would become 90. So then we're going to rotate the, the three-dimensional texture in space individually for each object to create a unique pattern, a unique mask for each object. And then that black and white pattern is going to be fed into this mix node, and it's going to tell the computer to put some of the darker colors in some places and some of the lighter colors in other places. And it's pretty subtle. I don't know if it's going to show up on YouTube, but there are darker and lighter patches here. We still have the repeating patterns that we're trying to get rid of. Like this pitting, this stuff is obviously repeating, 
but at least we're adding some color variation to disguise the fact that we're only using one texture for this whole thing. Let me go back to our UV map for a second for the next bit. So the next trick is to do something similar. We're going to rotate the textures, but in this case we're going to rotate the textures um, kind of randomly. With uh, we're actually, Instead of rotating the, the noise, we're going to rotate the textures. So we can see what this looks like. we got the fours lined up, the threes lined up. We're going to use a similar trick. Use a random value times the number of degrees. Split that out so it's going to rotate on the z-axis of the UV vector. And if I plug this into the rotation, just watch what happens down here in the rotation. You can see how that scrambles each one of these. So now we've got no pattern. You know, there everything is all perfectly lined up because we're using exactly the same UV layout for every one. And this one we're just scrambling it randomly for each individual object. So we're really destroying that repeating pattern. And if we plug in our texture again, we can see that those repeating noise patterns and that were so obvious in the middle, they're all gone. All right, so those are the, that's the, the main trick for, for scrambling that texture. And then I have another rust texture, which is basically doing the same thing, but it's a lighter, less saturated version. And then I have a mask that uses the same trick, you know, rotating randomly to create a unique black and white pattern for each track and then when those two things get mixed together, we get even more uh, variation. We get not only color variation, which you can see here, we've got some reds going on kind of randomly different between each track, but you don't see the same uh, pitting and color variations on each one. So each track is going to now be unique. There's also a dirt shader, which uses a simple dirt texture. Again, not tileable, um, simply a color that is then you know, run through a color ramp for roughness and run through another color ramp to create some false bump. And that just generates this, this dirt color. And using the same trick of creating a, a lighter version and a darker version that I used before of the color ramps. In this case though, I'm gonna use um, ambient occlusion and an exponent to really isolate the darker, darker dirt into the cracks. The idea being that you know the stuff in the cracks might be a little oily, a little wet. And so the you know the final out output from this is going to look like this. We're really accentuating the dirt, making the dirt in the cracks look darker by using this ambient occlusion and power. And then there's the final dirt mask, which mixes um, the dirt and the rust together. Now this uses again the same trick of randomness and the color ramps. It does use a little bit extra here in using the ambient occlusion to try to push more of the dirt into the cracks. So this is going to result in these dark areas where the dirt is going to accumulate more. And this uh, wheel wear uh, name here on this attribute, I forgot to mention it before, but these tracks I put in a, a vertex paint where I just painted white in places where the uh, wheels tend to rub the tracks clean. So on Panther, track, Panther tracks, they're kind of known for having burnished uh, track guides. Um, so anywhere that's white is going to be more metal, and anywhere that's black is going to be more rusty. And that's all this wheel wear attribute does. And if we mix these together and render it, you can see that the mask shows that, get out of that, shows that this area is a brighter white than the other. So we're going to try to push the, the bare metal through in these areas. It's kind of subtle here, but it works. And then on top of that, we have a steel shader, which is really just two PBRs with some color and bomb. I've got one that's a, a slightly rougher. Um, this one's at 0.6, and this one's at 0.5. So the idea is the shinier metal, again, it's subtle, so it may not show up on YouTube, but this, the shinier metal is going to be where the tracks, where the tracks get rubbed by the wheels, and the darker metal is, is elsewhere. And the last thing we've got going here is this edge wear mask, which is really defining where rust is and where bare metal is. And again, we're going to use um, the wheel wear attribute. Uh, but this time we're going to also combine that with pointiness attribute of the geometry node. So that this is going to tell us kind of where sharp edges are, and then we can crush those black and white values to get really uh, tight highlights along the edges. 
and this is just going to push it even further. You put an exponent on it, it's really just going to isolate just the edges of things. And then when you mix these together, this is the mask for metal, you know, bare metal, polished metal, and then rust. And if we run that whole thing through and generate the full shader, you can see the final result here. All right, so we've got nice rust that doesn't repeat. We've got some bare metal showing through um, and some dirt in the crevices. All right, so that's it for the uh, tutorial. If you liked it, you know, don't forget to hit the like key. Um, and don't forget that if you want this model, go to BlendSwap. Um, I'll put a link for that in the description. All right, thanks for watching.